I don't like the tariff strategy, Becky, as you know. The, uh, you know, just doubling down, uh, the, the other guy's got to do the same thing. Uh, pretty soon we're both shooting ourselves in the head. You know, uh, best guess is the tariffs, including these Chinese tariffs that we've got, uh, if we add in auto tariffs, uh, we're at a trillion dollars worth of tariffs, roughly, and we're about at a 1% ding on GDP, which is more or less a trillion dollars for the world economy. So, so far this escapade has cost us about $200 billion worth of output that we're going to not produce, and the rest of the world about 600. That's not a strategy to me. It doesn't make any sense at all. I like open markets. I like rule of law, and I like protected intellectual property. I like, I like all those things. But uh, trading, uh, trade, def trade uh, uh, tariffs is not the right way to get that done. Gordon, uh, the president said in the interview with with Joe that he is doing this because you can't. If they raise by to fifty, you can't have a tip for tap because we are already behind the eight ball in all of these situations. Um, Having said that, you can be worried about the unintended consequences. We, we may have more uh, products that we can tax uh, coming in than they can, but there are alternative measures. What, what would some of those unintended consequences potentially be? Well, certainly, as John points out, this is going to be a hit to everyone. But, you know, at this point, the question is, what are you going to do? China steals somewhere between 225 to 600 billion dollars worth of U.S. IP a year. That's according to the IP report. Of that amount, probably, you know, you're talking two, three hundred billion dollars is China's share. So the question is, what are you going to do? Nobody likes tariffs, of course. But the alternative is what? You allow the Chinese to continue to steal innovation? We've got to remember, we've got an innovation-based economy. If we, allow the, if we can't commercialize our own innovation, we don't have very much of an economy. So yes, there will be unintended consequences. It will be awful. But you cannot run three decades or so of miserable trade policy and not expect uh, something bad to happen. Gordon, uh, Larry Kudlow making comments this morning, saying that the Chinese have not offered any um, sort of potential for what they might see when it comes to intellectual property. You think by ratcheting things up that they can eventually be broken on that front? Well, um, yeah, I think that essentially we can because the United States has most of the leverage. We had the $375.2 billion trade, uh, def, merchandise trade deficit with China last year. 88.8% .8 of China's overall merchandise trade deficit in 2017 related to sales to the U.S. We're the bigger economy. The things that China threatens to do to retaliate aren't actually real threats. I mean, they could go after U.S. companies in China, but a lot of Chinese officials don't want to do that because they're worried that um, this will have a very bad effect on everyone investing into China. So China right now with a fragile economy, we've got a robust one. You know, we've got to have a fight with them, unfortunately, because they're continuing to engage in increasingly predatory policies and not just the theft of intellectual property. Gordon, uh, this is Jim Paulson. I was just wondering how much, if, if the U.S. slowed down in the, in the second half, how much would that affect this approach of President Trump? Could he, could, he, could he continue it? Could he continue it in the face of the political pressure that would be brought uh, here in this country if the economy slowed? Whether it was due to the trade or not, it would be blamed on it. Yeah, of course, that people are going to blame the current sitting president. I think it was wrong for President Trump in the interview with Joe to blame his predecessors, which he did by saying that they never raised the trade issue. But, you know, clearly uh, Presidents Bush, Obama, even President Clinton were really not very good in terms of defending American interests and protecting American workers and businesses. So, uh, you know, I'm not a domestic political expert. I don't know how that plays out. But nonetheless, I think most Americans understand that something's got to be done. And if you don't like tariffs, then you've got to figure out what else you're going to do. And the only what else that you can do is probably a ban on importation of Chinese products into the U.S., which is even more drastic. So for people who don't like these tariffs, you've got to say, what's the alternative? What are you going to do to protect American innovation? Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.